I'm Mason. Hi, my name is Louis Blammer. I was born September 4th, 1848 in Chelsea, Massachusetts. My father and my grandmother ran away from Virginia to Boston to have their freedom. Both were enslaved. I have two older brothers and one sister. I am the youngest child. My highest education was in grammar school. I was got mathematics and drafting. I joined the U.S. Navy when I was 15. Then I got a job as an office boy at a patent law firm. Then my boss recognized my talents for sketching and drawing. I was promoted to head draftsman earning $20 per week. I got my first patent in 1874 for improving toilets for the railroad cars. I was employed by Alexander Graham Bell to draft drawings for the Bell Telephone. I moved to Connecticut and also was a draftsman for the U.S. Lighting Company. I received a patent for the improved method of the light filament. Instead of this, I made this. I lit up the world. Then I made a school teacher and we had two kids. I died December 11th in 1928. Introducing Dr. Maria Cadilla Colon de Martinez, played by Daniel Lees. Hi, my name is Maria Cadilla Colon de Martinez. I was born December 21, 1884. I was born in the town of Arecibo in Puerto Rico. As a child, I became interested in writing stories. I shared my stories with my classmates. I graduated high school in 1902. I graduated from the University of Puerto Rico in 1906. A school was named after me. Ohio State University Library highly recognized my human rights effort. In 1933, I wrote the popular poetry of Puerto Rico, as well as other written works. I am one of the first women in Puerto Rico to earn a doctoral degree. I had two children. I died August 23, 1951. Frederick Douglass by Jaden. My name is Frederick Douglass. I was born in 1818 after I escaped from slavery in Maryland. I became a national leader of the abolition movement in Massachusetts and New York, and I was really famous for being an orator in my anti-slavery writings, and I supported the women's suffrage movement. I became, I was the first black person nominated vice president on the Equal Rights Party ticket. When I was 12, I learned the alphabet and how to read, and I taught other slave people how to that I did not know. And one time I got caught doing it, I got beat many times until I felt broken. When I was 20, I planned to escape and settle in Massachusetts. Just before changing my name, I changed it from Jonathan to Douglas, using my mom's last name Bailey before escaping to my freedom. My second wife, she is a Smith College graduate. And I also worked with Ida B. Wells, and I learned a lot from her. Me and Mrs. Douglas had five kids. One died unexpectedly and we all played the violin, and I left this earth in 1895. George Washington Carver by Jose. My name is George Washington Carver. I was born in 1816. I never knew when my birthday was. My parent was kidnapped when I was a baby. Me and my brother, we was raised by our master and and his wife. I had to work for my room and my food. I walked 10 miles to go to school, to the white school where I lived. I was accepted into college. When they saw me, I was not allowed to go there because I was a black person. I went to college to study art and piano. Then I study about plants. I became a plant doctor. I taught at Iowa State College. Then I 
taught at Tuskegee University. I make over 300 products of peanuts. For example, peanut butter, plastic, oil, milk, blue, paper, and mayonnaise, and many other things. In 1942, Henry Ford invited me to work with him at the automobile shop. I never got married, I never got children. I died in 1943. Madam C.J. Walker by Leilani. My name is Madam C.J. Walker. I was born on December 23, 1867 on a cotton plantation in Louisiana. I am an American entrepreneur, an activist, and a philanthropist. I am the first self-made millionaire in America. I invented hair products for black people after I lost my hair. I traveled all around the country to promote my hair products and my skincare products. I was a philanthropist and I donated lots of money to many organizations. And I helped black women to get jobs and feel good about themselves. I was the first to, in my family to be born free. My mother died when I was seven years old. I had to move to Mississippi to live with my aunt and I had to pick cotton and clean houses. I moved to St. Louis and I worked as a washerwoman for $1.50 a day. I made enough money to send my only daughter to school. My daughter's name was Alila Walker. I moved to Colorado and that is where my hair career came about. I worked hard and I became very successful. I never had to pick cotton again except to pick on my beautiful cotton dresses. I died in May 1919 at the age of 51. Jan and Smetzlinger by Mason. Hi, my name is Jan and Smetzlinger. I was born in 1852. My mother was a house slave and my father owned the plantation that I lived on. In 1873, I moved to Pennsylvania. Then I moved to Lynn, Massachusetts. I first learned how to make shoes by hand. I invented a shoe-making machine in 1883. I was 31. I made shoes for people all over the world, and all people could afford them. I died at the age of 37 in 1889. I worked myself too hard. I wanted everyone to have shoes. Sarah Rector by Yara. My name is Sarah Rector. I was born in 1902 in Oklahoma. My parents were free. I have five siblings. We were each given 160 acres of land. The land was not good to farm on. The good land was given to the white people. My father rented my land to an oil company. The oil company found oil on my land. I became rich when I was 10 years old. Because I was rich, the law said I had to be a white person. They made me live with the white man. He stole lots of my money. The Chicago Defender newspaper wrote a story about me. I had to go to boarding school at the Tuskegee Institute. People tried to kidnap me. When I turned 12, old men from all over the world wanted to marry me. My family moved to Missouri. I bought a very big house for us. When I turned 18, I became a millionaire. I enjoyed my life. I love cars. I shared my money with the poor children. I made sure that they had a good education. Then I got married and had three sons. 
One of my sons got killed by a white man. I died in 1967. Ellen Aglin by Bella. My name is Ellen Aglin. I was born in Washington, D.C. in 1849. When I was very young, I had to wash clothes for people. It made my hands sore. I was paid very little money. When I got older, I invented a clothes wringer. I had to sell it to a white person because nobody would buy it from a black woman. A white person gave me $18 for it. They made a lot of money from my clothes wringer. I also worked as a government clerk. I died in 1890. Dr. Jane C. writes by Johan. My name is Dr. Jane C. Wrights. I was born in Manhattan, New York in 1919. I graduated Smith College in 1942. Then I got my medical degree in 1945. I worked at my father's cancer research center at Harlem Hospital in New York. In 1949, I began the cancer research. I made numerous improvements to chemotherapy treatment. In 1955, I was named as Director of Cancer Chemotherapy Research at the New York University Medical Center. President Johnson appointed me to the President's Commission on Heart Disease, Cancer, and Stroke. I was the first woman to serve as president on the President's New York Cancer Society. I received many awards in my 44 years in the medical field. I wrote over 100 journals articles. I retired as a Merida professor in the New York Medical College. I left this earth when I was 94 years old in 2013. My research of cancer chemotherapy has helped to change the face of medicine and continues to be used today. I got married in July 27, in 1947 and had two children named Allison and Jane. Henrietta Lacks by Lalani. My name is Henrietta Lacks. I was born on August 1st, 1920. I am one of ten children. I grew up in Virginia. My mother died when I was four years old. I had to live on a plantation that had been owned by my white great-grandfather. At a young age, I had to work on a tobacco farm. I had five children. When I was dying of cancer, my nurses would not let me hold my children one last time. The researchers were more interested in my cells than in my tumor. They took my cells for research without mine or my family's permission. My cancer cell was the source of the HeLa cell line. The first immortalized human cell line and one of the most important cell lines in medical history. They reproduced indefinitely under specific conditions. The cells were shipped all over the world and they never died. I had enough cells to go around the world three times. My cells could live outside the body forever. My cells were used to cure AIDS, leukemia, polio, and cancer worldwide and to perfect medicine. My cells saved millions of lives all over the world. My cells made big profits for the drug companies. My children found out that my cells were used 20 years after my death and they received no payments at all. I died in 1951 at the age of 31. Introducing Bessie Coleman by Savannah. 
Hi, I am Bessie Elizabeth Coleman. I was born in 1892, in January 29th. I am one of the 13 children in my family. We were sharecroppers in rural Texas. I spent my childhood picking cotton and doing laundry for white people. I had to walk four miles every day to get to school. I realized in 1915 that I need to move north if I want to wild life. I moved to Chicago as a great part of migration and took a job at a barber shop. In my free time, I began reading about flying. I read about a European woman who served as a pilot in World War I. I decided to become an aviator, but no school America would let me. Because of my color and because I was a woman, I couldn't take no for an answer. The black-owned newspaper, the Chicago Defender, sponsored me, so I taught myself French and moved to France. I learned how to fly at an aviation school in France. In seven months, I specialized stunt flying and parachuting. In 1921, I became the first black woman to earn a pilot's license. I became a show pilot, but I would not perform in air shows. If African Americans were not allowed to use front entrance and sit with white people as spectators. I died because I was testing a new aircraft in 1926 at age 34 from a plane crash. And Ida W. Wells spoke at my funeral. In 1929, my dream of opening a school became fulfilled. My school educated and inspired many outstanding black pilots, including the Tuskegee Airmen of World War II. My name is 
جهان My name is Jaden.